Hello guys, once again it's Matt and today we have another video. Thank you all the members, all the patrons. Make sure to subscribe. We are trying to hit 50,000 subscribers until the end of the year. And let's get going guys. Thank you all the members, it always helps a lot. So let's go. But uh, yeah, first of all, just a, a kind of a disclaimer here. Um, I really wanted to do this video before, but uh, it was just a lot of things covering the dev server and stuff. So just be aware, okay? Um, there is some people like thinking that it's a, uh, the, I don't know, Gaijin is paying the content creators to not talk about this or whatever, which is really weird even, but still. I wanted to talk about the main problem with War Thunder again. I already did a video on this back in the day. I don't know if you remember this. I had like half the subscribers, so it's been a while kind of. Uh, so, but I wanted to reiterate that opinion that I have together with the additions, uh, with the occurring economic changes and all sorts of weird things happen. Okay, uh, so let's start with the economy, okay? So the economy isn't helping, okay? Yeah, obviously the economy of the game is not the greatest thing ever right now. Uh, and it kind of became worse uh, in that change that they did. Um, to be honest, I I'm going to be fair here. The idea that they had uh, with the rank-based economy is actually a good idea. It's just that the implementation had a kind of a weird effect. Um, in my opinion, at least, you saw some very interesting things. I'm talking specifically about the repairs. I'm not going to talk too much about the rewards because I think the, the rewards should be, of course, if, if you're going to do a rank-based economy, right? Uh, they will be changed nonetheless. But the thing is that it was really weird that it, it, if you think like in a graphic or something like that or in a line that you think that the lower tiers will pay more, less and then the higher tiers will pay more. It was weird that, yes, the rank-based economy is better. It would make it so that it's have a, we just have a better progression throughout the top, until the top tier with prices and stuff and rewards, right? And not have the crazy amounts of repair costs that we have, for example, in a B29, out of nowhere, being a prop in tier 4, you know, uh, having like a 40,000 lion repair cost or something crazy like that, right? So the rank-based economy itself, the idea is, is correct, that you would need to have lower ranks with lower repair costs and, and lower rewards, but higher tiers with higher uh, repair costs and higher rewards. So this idea itself, it's, it's a very good one. The problem is that... As I was saying, if you have a graphic or something like that, you would see that the higher tiers it was not I wouldn't I wouldn't say exponentially more expensive and you know the rewards wouldn't just compound, uh, just go with it. But it it felt like that, you know. Um instead of having, for example, one aircraft that had a twenty thousand lion repair cost like the F5 E had it in a kind of a higher tier. You had basically every single aircraft in the top tier with that. So that was the main problem, in my opinion, right? That the idea was right, but they kind of overdid it with the prices, right? I mean, you can have a rank-based economy, but make it more, like, tuned down a little bit. You can see that this was a thing, just looking at the graphics that and the, the table sheets that they, they gave us, you know? You can see that, I mean, there are some exceptions for this, but... Generally, the lower tiers until like rank 4, it was pretty alright for the most part. But then afterwards, it became like really, uh, yeah, out of the box expensive, right? And the rewards, it was kind of the same. Um, before rank 4, rank 5, it was okay. But afterwards, it kind of became weird. And with some very specific vehicles becoming really, really, really bad. So this is my opinion on the take of the economy that they did, okay? I think it, the idea itself is okay, it's a, an okay idea, but the implementation of it was, on the very least, very weird, right? So that's the main thing. Um, of course, they gave that weird kind of post that they talked about it, how, like, the games work and progressions and stuff. And, I mean, everybody knows that we need progression in the game, 
that we need some form of way to monetize the game because it is a free-to-play game, it is a company. If it doesn't make money, the game just stops existing. And especially me, I don't want that. It is one of my favorite games of all time. I mean, I've been playing this since 2013, early 2013. So very early in the beta. Um, and today it basically became my main way of actually making money. So I live out of this game and making videos out of it, right? So especially something, especially somebody, someone that have been playing this game for such a long time, I don't want this game to just fail and crash, right? But it always comes down to the balance between the amount of money that they can actually squeeze out of the players, right? On the, in the sense of having premiums and other source, sorts of basically other other uh, sources of money that a free-to-play game can have, right? And at the same time, not making so much expensive, so, so expensive that players basically leave. And that's the main, like, balancing that we need because, yes, they need money and this type of change will make them have money, but it, it's not supposed to be too much because if it is too much, players leave, right? So it's a balancing factor between these two things and I guarantee to you guys it's not easy to do this but it always comes down to the grind itself I think in my opinion right the problem with the game um, even if it's impossible to have another system because we need some sort of progression and money flowing in somehow for the game to actually exist the grind itself makes a lot of players go away and actually, I was looking at um, Things Variety actually video about it, and I kind of agree with some of his points that a lot of players, and this is like kind of personal to me even because I had multiple friends that started playing War Thunder, multiple, like five, six friends that started playing War Thunder, and they didn't continue because the grind was so heavy. So not only the economy makes you like it, the grind is already heavy af you know it's really heavy on the top tiers so a guy like i had a friend of one of my friends that loves mix as much as i do and he wanted to get a mic but he started playing with the chaika and stuff and then he played like for i don't know one month more and he was like he, he, did, he didn't have premium he didn't have a lot of time to play it so he was like one month later he was barely on like tier four or something like that, tier three, something like that. Yes, of course, I mean, it takes time for you to progress into the game, but I mean, he didn't even like reached the part that it becomes really heavy on the grind, which is like the latest two tiers, the two ranks, I mean. So he basically just left the game. I have a cousin that did the same, started playing, but he, t he told me, how do I play this game and stuff? Uh, let me know, what, whatever, you know. And I told him the, the, what you have to do and stuff and play the game. He started playing. Two weeks later, he couldn't have anything that he wanted. It was too far away for him to get it. So, yes, there is a factor of balancing this thing. Of having to have money flowing. Having to have a progression. Yes, of course. I, I think all the players understand that. But it is so much and it's so heavy sometimes that a lot of players just go away. And with a lot of players going away, you have like a kind of a cascade effect or just an effect of a snowball effect, right? That it becomes a problem because they need the money and no new players are coming in or not as many as they should. Or a lot of people are coming in but going away as well. If they go away, they don't spend money in the game not spending money in the game, the game can die, right? So it's kind of a no, a no effect, a snowball effect of just, it's getting worse and worse in that situation uh, generally, right? I mean, we are having more and more players from the past like two to three years, and like from 2020 upwards, we had like a lot of players coming into the game and, and, and staying, right? So they are doing something right. The game is amazing. The game has a lot of potential. But they really need to be careful on this economic thing and overall just on the way that they charge the premiums, especially 
uh, the way that everything's priced, I mean, $70 for a premium pack, I think it's a little bit pricey on the very least, right? So, I don't know, it just makes it so that the grind is already heavy, man. If the grind would be a little bit less and maybe continue with that expensive model, but uh, with just at least less grind or a little bit more money, I don't know, something needs to change for it for this, this game to actually blow up a lot more than he already has. I think he has everything on its table to be one of the best games out there for this type of thing, this type of genre of games, right? But he, he needs this click, you know? He needs something to just make the players play the game for the game itself, you know? And not just for the grind, not just for getting new stuff, uh, because this is actually what kills the game for a lot of people. Not being able to actually play with whatever you want. Uh, imagine my idea here is that if you have a more engaging gameplay or something like that, for example, a player that wants to fly a, a F-14 wouldn't care to fly a, like props for a very long time because the game is so engaging, right? So I think this is the X of the question. We can talk about economy, uh, we can talk about G pre packs. We can talk about everything like that. But I think all, at the end of the day, it always comes down to the engagement that the player has with the game. Uh, because the more people are playing the game for the game itself and not, not just for getting the new vehicle or the new aircraft or the aircraft that they want specifically, but for the gameplay itself, the more people will just play the game for a very long time. The more people play the game for a very long time, we can have more people playing, uh, buying premiums, buying, putting money into the game. The more we have that, the less pricey these premiums need can be. You know, at, uh, you know, uh, in a general way, of course, uh, these need to be like it needs to have kind of a, a way of balancing this. But still, you know, we understand what I'm saying. Like the guy needs to, if you have a lot of people playing. A lot of money will come in and with a lot of these things with more money coming in and stuff they can maybe chill out a little bit on the economy because at, at the end of the day progression and i don't think people are understanding this uh, apparently in the community the community is just on a riot right now but they forget that this whole thing at least in my opinion i think they forget that this whole thing about economy and why the economy is in the game is because the game needs to make money in economy, it's a way of that. Yes, progression, of course, but that's the thing. If you have a very big progression in their heads, people will want to buy a premium or a premium aircraft, right? Premium time, premium aircraft to get more money quicker, you know? So, but it, it kind of became too much. Of course, it kind of became too much, you know? So we kind of need a new system here. As I said, I still think that the problem is more deep than just the economy, just the Silver Lions. I think a lot of the gameplay that I see, a lot of the players, a lot of my friends, a lot of the community just play for the grind, for getting the new stuff, for getting the new vehicle, for getting the new X or Y, the new weapon, whatever, and kind of forget about a little bit about the gameplay itself. And I think that's where they should focus maybe continue with the economy that they had right now they did the re reverse it one the original one for now at least and try to focus on more gameplay stuff i don't know what i mean i'm not a like a i i, I really don't have a very solid idea behind this i i'm for sure that my idea behind would be more engaging battles you know so at least more objectives you know, more types of competitive gameplay at the same time being very fast-paced game, at the same time having strategy. Things that make you think about and do the gameplay itself and not just trying to get the new vehicle, right? And I see that a little bit on Naval right now being added. For example, with the new uh, islands, with the, the, the battleship turrets and stuff. And I see that with the bigger maps with RB, you know, but for example, Simulator has been forgotten a little bit. RB, where is the Enduring Confrontation RB, you know? Where is more types of more engaging situations uh, for gameplay? You know, it's 
always kind of the same? Where is the asymmetrical part of the battlefield that exists in real life? I know, asymmetrical battlefields make you lose a lot if you are in the, the short stick part, you know? But it would make it so that it is more engaging. I always, it, it always comes down to the rush mode on battlefield. If you played battlefield, you would know what I'm talking about. Rush was a kind of an asymmetrical kind of situation on Battlefield 3 and 4 and or even before that and it was okay that it was asymmetrical yes uh, a, a lot of the times you know a certain team would lose a lot because it has a disadvantage of having to attack a certain point that was difficult or whatever but it was uh, engaging it was much more rewarding any type of more realistic environment or more objectives and having to use a certain strategy or anything like that can be way more effective to keep a, a player engaged than just getting a new vehicle every time and making the game out of that, you know? So, yeah, this is my opinion on it. I agree that that type of system might be the future of War Thunder, the rank-based, but not in the way that they added understand that we need some form of more linear progression in the economy to actually work better. Right now, it is not the way that it's supposed to go, but that thing was kind of weird as well. So yeah, we need something at least on that part to maybe chill the community a little bit. Maybe it would make it so that it's a little bit better. And it's good that the community is actually getting together with this, you know. Um, I just think that maybe we need to get together on more a more material way, you know, and less just screaming. Like, get the ideas out there. Get the ideas on the forums, especially on Reddit or whatever, you know, but get the ideas out there and not just remove the silver lions. It's, come on, they're not going to do that. We need a cons constructive kind of environment here because if not, um, I don't know, I'm not pessimistic about this, but... I don't think everybody wants that the game dies, you know. I know a lot of people hate Gaijin. I know, I understand. You can hate whatever you want, but I don't think you really... I mean, if you are that engaged in the community with this subject, you're probably... You probably love this game a little bit, at least, right? And you want the game to survive. So we need to be constructive about it. We need to not have... Exploit the issue, but at least have some form of material constructive union and just with the community right to actually make everything work right but anyway this is my opinion on it so here it is um a little bit controversial maybe because there is a lot of screaming in the community right now but anyway it's my opinion okay leave it in the comments what you think about it and i see you guys on the next one bye subscribe